Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss the basic meaning of international trade and further we are also going to discuss the various theories pertaining to it. Now let us first understand the basic meaning of what exactly international trade is. See, whenever there is an exchange of goods and services between various countries and that is usually for their development, their economic growth. So this is basically known as international trade. So the trade which is happening across the boundaries or basically beyond the boundaries of the countries, it is simply called international trade. Now, according to Matt Ridley, he is basically one of the eminent writers and journalists of UK. So according to him, around 5,200 years ago, in Uruk city, that is in southern Mesopotamia, which he considers as probably the first city in the world, housing more than 50,000 people within its six miles of wall Uruk, its agriculture made possible by irrigation canals, was home to the first class middlemen, trade intermediaries, a cooperative trade network set the pattern that would endure for 6,000 years. So basically, he wants to say that around 5,200 years ago also, there was proper trade network. And trade has been in existence from a very or since a very long time. Now, there have been many beliefs regarding how international trade takes place or it should take place. So, they are basically or simply called trade theories. Now, let us discuss classical country based theories in detail. See, the first one is mercantilism. It was prominent in the 16th century and it was believed at that time that a country should increase its gold and silver reserves by exporting as much as it can and it believed in protectionism okay meaning imports should be restricted so when we look at the world history from 1500s to late 1800s it helps us explain why mercantilism flourished at that time see the 1500s market saw the rise of new state whose rulers wanted to strengthen their armies and national institutions and they for this they required more and more money that is more and more wealth in the form of gold and other type of precious metals so they started focusing on exports and at the same time they wanted to curb their imports because that would lead to drain of wealth from their countries. Okay, so mercantilism theory basically talks about increasing exports and decreasing imports and and gathering as much as gold and silver reserves for their countries to strengthen their armies, their national institutions of importance. Okay. Now the next theory is theory of absolute advantage. So it was propounded by Adam Smith in his famous book, The Wealth of Nations. He basically talked about two countries which can trade if one country produces more efficiently in one of the goods. So basically he talked about two nations, okay, two goods and one factor of production and that is labor so this is very important question that when we talk about theory of invest absolute advantage there are two goods two countries and one factor of production that factor of production is labor so he strongly advocated the theory of lazy's fair that is free trade so for example if there are two countries us and india and if us let's say produces cloth and machines Okay, and India also pro produces cloth and machines. And let's say US produces 8 cloths in 1 hour and India pro produces 10 cloths in 1 hour. So India is producing more cloths in 1 hour. Whereas when we talk about machines, US produces let's say 20 machines in 1 hour and India is able to produce 10 machines only in an hour. So here, where uh, 
India is having absolute advantage in cloth, okay, because it is taking less time to produce it, okay. Whereas US has absolute advantage in machine because it is able to produce more machines in a lesser time, right? Now the next theory is theory of comparative advantage, and it was given by Sir David Ricardo in eighteen seventeen. So he basically proposed that even if a country has an absolute disadvantage okay absolute disadvantage in both the goods it can still trade with other countries see let's say let's take the example of us and india again let's say country a which is us is producing 8 wheats per hour and country b that is india is producing 1 wheat per hour okay and when we talk about cloth us is producing four cloths per hour whereas india is producing two cloths per hour so here we can see that country b that is india has absolute disadvantage in both the goods because it is taking more time and also producing let less goods to produce both the goods now let's see the absolute disadvantage which is lower in in which good okay so in country b we can see that it has less disadvantage in case of cloth because when we subtract 4 minus 2 it is 2 when we subtract 8 minus 1 it is 7 so we can see that 2 is lesser difference okay in case of cloth so country b that is india should produce cloth right so we can see that country b has relatively less disadvantage in producing cloth as in the case of cloth or wheat right it produces just one in one hour but in case of cloth it can produce at least two in one hour okay and this theory also is based on two goods two countries and one factor of production that is labor now the other theory is hecksher ohlin theory or modern theory it was proposed by eli hecksher botin ohlin in the early 1900s so they believed that any country can gain competitive advantage okay even if the labor is costly in that country okay but its other factors of production are cheap so this was for the first time that someone proposed more than one factor of production that is labor so the other factors of production include land capital and entrepreneurship however its exception was seen in america by leontief and therefore leontief paradox it is called okay so this question has been asked many a times that what is the exception of hexchen hexsher ohlin theory or modern theory so the answer is leontief paradox because in america it was seen once by sir leontief parrot leontief that this case is not applied that apart from labor other factors of production were not leading to trade okay now let us practice some important question questions what is the exception of hexsher ohlin theory theory of opportunity absolute advantage leontief paradox none of the above see we just discussed that leontief paradox given by sir leontief is basically the exception of hexsher ohlin theory now the next question is a strategy of protectionism is followed in which theory comparative advantage mercantilism absolute advantage all of the above see we discussed that when we talk about mercantilism it which was there okay in late in 1500s basically so there the country mostly focused on exports that is gathering as much as gold and other precious reserves okay precious metals reserves as they could and at the same time they did not allow okay the imports okay they were against the imports they wanted more and more money for themselves so this policy is basically known as policy of protectionism right so this was basically during the period of mercantilism right so hope you and what we studied today 
we talked about meaning of trade and various theories like mercantilism theory of absolute advantage theory of comparative advantage and lastly hexerolin theory or modern theory so this was all for today thank you so much for your time